dispel coronavirus outbreak as a severe impact on the livelihood of households and business activities are resulting to drop in global demand for goods and services, decline consumer confidence and slow down in production amongst others. The federal government through the Central Bank of Nigeria and the Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning last month announced some monetary and fiscal measures to help mitigate the impact of coronavirus pandemic on the economy, Nigerian businesses and households. Now, the CBN on its own announced 50 billion uh, Naira uh, targeted credit facility as a stimulus package to support uh, households and uh, microfinance, uh, micro small and uh, medium enterprises that are affected by the coronavirus pandemic. The TCF was designed to cushion the adverse uh, effects of COVID-19 on households and MSMEs, support households and MSMEs whose economic activities have been significantly disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic and to stimulate credit to MSMEs and expand uh, their productive capacity through equipment upgrade and research and also development. The Nigerian incentive-based uh, risk sharing system for agricultural lending, which manages the funds have received applications in excess of 80,000. The managing director of Narsel Microfinance Bank, Abu Bakakure, says people whose applications were successful would start having access to their facilities this week. The 50 billion Naira targeted credit facility is financed from the Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Development Fund, which the CBN launched in 2013 with a share capital uh, of 220 billion naira facility. Now, the facility has maximum limit of 25 million for SMEs, while the amount that can be assessed will be decided on the uh, basis of activities, cash flow, and industry size of each beneficiary. Hey, we have Mr. Johnson Chuku now live. He is on via Skype. And Mr. Johnson, it's good to have you join us on the show this Friday. Thank you, Tolu, for having me. Yes, uh, I don't want to ask if you're enjoying this lockdown because I know, of course, you, <laughs> you've also been working from home one way or the other. Uh, but but, but uh, I'm worried. We've been hearing a lot about this fund, this 50 billion uh, Naira, this targeted credit facility in excess of 80,000 for the application. And I think they were expecting about 40,000 and all of this, all around this. Uh, how does this come to you? How would you assess this effort by the Apex Bank? to help small businesses, households, and all of that, particularly at this time? Uh, so I think uh, it is, uh, well, for me, it's one of the uh, most important interventions uh, that we have today because a lot of small and medium scale are going to be very negatively affected by the, this uh, lockdown. The simple thing that we see a lot, we know a lot of businesses that operate on very thin capital base. And what has happened over the past period of four weeks they have been living on that their capital base and they they have exhausted it completely so even with lockdown lifted next week they won't have money to resume their normal business activity you have the people young uh, men and women who are you know, hawking granites or hawking handkerchiefs well, how do you think they survive they earn one thousand naira two thousand naira in a day and then um, including those who are carrying banana around after vehicles they, and they live on those income on a daily basis. So if their capital is 100,000, for instance, and they live on average of one, even 1,000 in a day, uh, in the last uh, tw 28 days or so that we're going to have the lockdown, they would have spent with 8,000 naira. If they're living on 2,000 naira, they would have spent something like uh, 56,000 naira of their money. And imagine if they have families. So what will happen is when you reopen the economy, they will have nothing to return business. So this... Um, 50 billion that the central bank year mark for intervention to support the most affected uh, households and small and billion enterprises is very apt. And uh, it, I, I just hope they have to um, work on it. Of course, they say they're going to, they're going to go through uh, uh, the National um, uh, Microfinance uh, Bank to disburse these funds. I hope they are branches of those, uh, that bank everywhere in the country. But I also think they should also leverage an existing uh, microfinance banks that are little over the country because a lot of these small business operators use the microfinance banks. We may also need to explore the informal sector, for informal system, like the ISUSU system, uh, the cooperative system. These are some of them that are underbanked uh, and unbanked 
use this system and the, the cooperative system where they contribute money on a weekly basis. And then if you go to those societies or cooperative societies, they will be able to identify their customer and they will guarantee them so that government can provide some level of soft credit to these people. Otherwise, the impact of the economic impact of this uh, uh, health crisis will be more severe than the health crisis itself. Because these people come out with nothing, and if they don't have anything to feed themselves, they may uh, become social deviants. And so we must do everything to avoid that. Now, we're talking about data here, very importantly. Mr. Johnson, m moving on, a lot of expectations and production is on the low side, low outputs. We know what's happening with the crude oil markets. H how do you see SMEs patching up post-COVID-19? Uh, a lot of issues people are looking at uh, at this time. Just tell us in straight terms what you are uh, expecting. I think uh, the SMEs, like every other sector of the economy, are going to have some difficulties, like capital difficulties in the economic space. We should expect that the economy will uh, go into a recession because of, uh, one, low crude price, and two, low demand for crude. And uh, these are going to, in fact, our ability to assess foreign exchange. It will affect the ability of government to earn revenue. It will affect the ability of government to spend. Uh, so you're going to see a slowdown in government expenditure, which will also lead to a contraction uh, in the overall economic activity. So the um, demand for the services and the products of the SMEs will grow some, will encounter some level of uh, depression or, or contraction. So I expect these SMEs to now no look at their cost profile and look at how do they manage their costs. It's going to be a period of cost leadership because when you can really grow your revenue by actually uh, pushing into the market, the best, next best option is to uh, to manage your cost. The other thing I would expect the SMEs to also look at what are those alternative delivery channels that are going to leverage on the uh, uh, quick adoption of technology that we are witnessing today so as to minimize their operating costs. Um, for instance, why would an SME come and set up a business operation somewhere in Neki or VI or Ikoi? What's wrong with uh, Ikoi? Uh, and then you realize that some of the services you provide will not require you to be physically present in the central business district. So people should look at how do we keep our costs low. Uh, keeping your costs low will also involve some level of share, cost sharing. If you are co-locating with other business operators in your line of business, you can share some of the costs, like energy costs. You can contribute money and buy a generator instead of each and everyone having its own generator. Uh, and then you fuel it collectively and uh, share the cost of maintenance. That way you're going to bring down your cost. So I think the focus of our SMEs will be cost leadership, uh, keeping your cost profile low, avoiding uh, massive investment in capital assets uh, at this point in time, and also looking for alternative channels of distributing or delivering your services to the consumers. Uh, because it's starting that way, we should expect a slowdown economic activities. Mr. Johnson, follow up to that in, in 60 seconds. I, I'd like you to also look at uh, SMEs face other challenges. And one thing that worries me, I asked Mr. Degun earlier, is the issue of data. Uh, data seems to be very important. We have financial constraints, lack of infrastructure. We can go on and on. We've been talking about all of this for a while. Poor marketing, lack of strategic planning. But the focus is how well, because when there is data, government can plan, central bank can plan, there can be proper planning. So that's where I'm looking at it. Don't we need to straighten up all of this? Yes, we do. Uh, unfortunately, even the data we have is disaggregated. Uh, it's uh, in silos. You, you don't have a central database. You can go and get a lot of information you need. For instance, a, a, um, a, an SME that is into a particular manufacturing, you need to be able to assess information on where you have a uh, source of raw materials. Uh, within the country. You may not have that. Uh, but the, these are constraints we, have, we are living with. Uh, some of the uh, financial information or statistical information are not available in the GMB of statistics, but they may not be so relevant to uh, the SMEs. Information on uh, source of raw materials, market size, uh, demand pattern, uh, demographics are not easily available uh, to the SMEs. For instance, sectorial reports are provided 
sometimes by some of the big audit firms, sometimes by some of the uh, consulting and IT agencies in the country. But they, like I said, they are inside of the disaggregated and can't really assess them. And if you have to assess them, they are quite expensive for the SMEs, which also takes you to the issue of uh, cost uh, pooling again, again, I mentioned earlier, where uh, they can come together and buy uh, uh, information on the market size, the, the, the performance of the market or commission, uh, a consultant to provide that information to them. I know a, a bank like Bank of Industries have consultants that they engage and uh, who are supposed to who handhold the SMEs in a lot of getting information and putting their structures in place. Right. But for SMEs, some of the SMEs may not even be aware of this, uh, that some information can be provided by, to them by the SME, uh, by DOI. There's also a, an enterprise um, Department, the uh, enterprise development department in a, in a Lego business school that also support SMEs. Uh, but unfortunately, many of them are not aware of this. I think it's for them to come together and pull resources and then gain access to some of these and global costs. Mr. Johnson Chuku, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for your time.